Hi everyone, it's Lisa. I'm here. I have exactly eight o'clock and I'm going to give you a few minutes to get on. I'm always troubled when I first come on because there's a little red button that comes up that says connection error and I'm like a connection error. There can't be a connection error. So that kind of puts me in a little bit of a freak out mode because I want to make sure that you can hear me and you can see me. I am here in the embellished stamp room. You can see I have a Christmas tree. Yep. I just love Christmas. It's my favorite time of year, but I've got some Christmas and some non-Christmas for what I'm going to show you today. Hi, Casey. I see that you're here. I'm glad I'm not alone. I have some really, really fun project to show you tonight. Hi, Marion. Um, it's a new fold. Actually, let's take that back. It's not a fold. It's a cut. So I think it's going to be something different. I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you. You see something that intrigues you and you're like, oh, I want to make that. There's no instructions, and that's exactly what happened to me. I've seen something similar to this. Hi, Michelle! And I was like, oh no, but it took me a whole day to figure this out to the point where I could actually reteach it to you so it would make some sense. I'm going to probably go a little slower than normal, and I want to make sure that you get the gist of how it's done. Hi, Sue! If you guys come on, would you please tell me if this is your first time watching the spotlight? or if you're back, and if you've been back before, tell me how many you've seen. Now, these are spotlight events. Where we're showcasing just one project tonight, but I am so glad that you joined me, and I just wanna wish you all a Merry Christmas. It's a little early, but uh, we're pretty decked out here. This year, we've got a total of nine trees. They're uh, not all very big, as you can see from this one here, but um, we do have a seven foot in the family room, and all the rest kind of range in other sizes. But uh, I'm just crazy for the holidays this time of year. I just love it. Oh, and I'm telling you, my waistline's starting to feel it too. I'm backing off the cookies, totally backing off the cookies. I made a list of things I want to talk to you about tonight before we get started. I just want to give a few minutes for other people to get on. Because keep in mind, if you're not in the Eastern time zone, you will have to have adjusted your time to make sure that you can be here. So I don't want to miss them before we get started. So let me look really quick at my list. Obviously, this is live. I am literally in my stamp room right now in Florida and you are where you're at. Hi Julie, second time, glad you're here. If you lose the connection, just come back, I'll be here. If I lose you, oh gosh, let's hope that doesn't happen. And um, I'm looking, Fortune Burke, that's my mom, so hi mom. <laughs> my grandmother had a sense of humor why she named her Fortune. We, st we still always giggle about it. People are like, seriously? Yeah, that's my mom. Every girl needs her mom to be her cheerleader, right? Hi Susan. So if I should lose you, I will come back. So there'll be a second part to this. The great thing too about Facebook is it does record it. So you'll be able to come back and watch this in its entirety if you've missed the very beginning. So that's not a problem for you. The other thing, please keep in mind there is a lag between the time that you're actually watching this and I'm actually speaking. It's about 15 seconds, maybe a little bit longer. And also when I go to flip the camera down to the stamp table to stamp with you, it's literally at my eye level so I won't be able to read all your comments as easily as I can right now when they're actually facing me. So please be patient with me. I am um, really dedicated to reading every single one even if I can't do it while I'm live and I will comment or like it so you know I've seen it and I do that after the video. Tonight I'm going to post the pictures of the project I'm going to show you but I'm also going to post pictures of the alternate project ideas using the same cut. So I think that's going to be a great thing for you. So I think you'll be able to refer to that. Obviously the video for the special cut is going to be really helpful for you to be able to go back and watch again and again just to refresh the dimensions. And hi Casey, you've been here for all of them, three or four. I think it's been actually, let's see, August, September, October, November, five of them. So she's been here for five. Hi Kathy Wason, good to see you. All right, looking at my list really quick. I've had lots of people ask me, when is the next studio stamps in the mail? Well, I want to chat with you about that really, really quick. It's coming in January, but this is December and it's a busy time of year. We're all getting ready for Christmas. So hi, Pat. It's good to see you. So there's some good things coming your way. So let me show you what they are. If you're one of my current online customers, you are going to be getting this in the mail. This is the brand new Occasions catalog. Now I know you've got a mirrored image. I know everything's backward. It won't be that way when I tip you down, so bear with me. I can't open it. I know it's kind of a bummer, but I can't, they don't allow us to open it. It previews um, for you on January for, um, 4th. January 4th is when it stops. And also at the same time, 
This is Celebration, that Stampin' Up's largest sale of the year. For every $50 you spend, you can choose something for free from this book. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's amazing. It, I don't know how they do it every year. It just seems to get better and better. You can see a little bit on there of what's coming up and a little bit on here what's coming up. So January stamps in the mail. Well, I've had people say I need a couple Valentine's cards, but I don't need a whole lot. And I'm with you. I maybe need maybe one or two. So this is what I'm doing. I'm creating a custom bundle of product for you for January studio stamps in the mail. It's going to be a stamp set. It's going to be designer paper, embellishments, ribbons, bags, all kinds of great stuff. I know you're going to absolutely love, but here's the best part. That bundle is going to be $50 on purpose because I want you to be able to choose a freebie. So not only will you get studio stamps in the mail, but you'll get your freebie. Now, if you don't know what studio stamps in the mail is, let me very quickly tell you. Whether you're a new stamper or you're a seasoned stamper, it doesn't matter because I make it super easy. You'll make eight cards two each of four different designs. And I'm kind of a simple stamper, but I like embellishments. So those are all included. Everything is pre-cut and it comes right to you at home priority mail. You get the products that I mentioned and you get a video and a PDF tutorial. And the PDF tutorial is step-by-step -step instructions and there are pictures along the way. Hi, Cindy, it's good to see you here. So that's what Studio Stamps in the Mail is. So you wanna know when? Well. This doesn't go live until January 4th, so we kind of got to wait. So it's going to be January 4th to January 8th. It's a very small window to order your studio stamps in the mail. Hi, Jan, because I want to get them to you in plenty of time so that you can enjoy them. I will tell you there will be something with a love theme to cover your Valentine, but lots more. So it won't be limiting. I think when you spend $50 on product, you should be able to use it all year round, and I'm just a firm believer in that. So I think you're going to be really pleased. All right, let's see. Did I cover all of that? So January 4th to January 8th, keep your eyes peeled for that. I was looking to put that down. The next full length live with Lisa. Hi, Jan. Hi, Nancy. I love seeing all you guys. The next full length live with Lisa event is coming up on December 10th. I think that's next Saturday, isn't it? Yes, it's next Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. We are probably thinking that's what this is. No, this is just a spotlight, which means I just do one project with you. Live with Lisa is a full length event. Oh, we go for about an hour. I demonstrate, I have tons of additional ideas, and the best part is you're gonna get the PDF tutorial to everything. So it's a big shindig, but you're ready for the best part? Free prizes, yes, I give away free product just randomly to those that are gonna be there. Now, how do you get in on it? It's super easy. You're just gonna place a $35 product order or you can order the studio stamps in the mail for January. So keep in mind, this one is just gonna be a $35 order because it's already closed studio stamps in the mail for December. So I want you to be with me. So there's a blue button at the top here of the Facebook page that says learn more. If you click on that, it'll take you over to my blog and then you can place an order there. We would love to have you join us. We sure would. All right, so I think that's kind of all of it. At the end, I've got samples to show you, and I'm also going to show you what I'm going to be doing in Live with Lisa next Saturday. Hi, Loretta. I'm glad you're here. Hi, Kathy Vaught. Good to see you. All right. Are you guys ready? I am going to turn on my little fangled light so you don't have too many shadows, and then I'm going to flip you down. You're not going to have a pretty view, so bear with me. All right. So let me turn on my light first. I find that helps. Okay, and you're going to get an ugly view, so bear with me. Flip you down. And I am going to adjust this so that you can see a little bit better. There we go. I think that's good. That's probably about as straight as I'm going to get it. We're going to need this. So I don't want to cover up too much of this. So I know it's not real pretty right here. So bear with me. Hi, Beverly. I'm glad you're here. All right. So the first thing I want to talk to you about are these. Now, these are the foam adhesive strips. We are going to use this tonight, but we're not going to use them in the typical fashion which would be for a shaker card, which I think is why Stampin' Up! included them. We're going to use them for something else. Now, this is my Stampin' Up! catalog. If you don't have this catalog and you are interested in purchasing Stampin' Up! products, I would love to send you one. And if you're a current online customer of mine and you don't have it, boy, shout out to me. You have to have this. Those foam adhesive strips are right here. 
They are $8 US for 10 yards. Here's the best part. They're already pre-cut for you. You're just gonna peel off and use them. And I'm showcasing those because I want you to know about them because we're gonna use them extensively tonight. So I'm just gonna slide that over. All right, I am starting with a piece of Whisper White cardstock. I'm grabbing my bone folder. I'm a big fan of that. This paper measures eight and a half by five and a half, and I'm gonna fold this in half. This is the base of my card. So this is the actual card itself. Then I've cut two additional pieces of paper. This one is four by four. I'm using Marina Mist. And this one is three by four, Marina Mist. So you can see that there's two pieces here. I'm using mechanical pencil. I'm a big fan of a mechanical pencil simply because I found the eraser really erases well. Now, after I designed the card, I was like, oh, I wonder if they're going to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to make my tick marks heavier than you probably would at home, just so that you can see them. And I'll hold them up along the way. The Stampin' Up! grid paper has a ruler on the left and on the bottom, which makes measuring things super, super easy. And that's going to be important for today's cut on this special card. All right, so I'm going to go slow so you can follow with me. We're going to do the cut first, then we're going to do the stamping. All right, so this piece of paper four by four, I'm lining up on the grid paper. And I'm just lining up, I'm, I'm lining up as close as I can. Now I'm, I'm kind of stuttering because I am a good foot and a half away from the camera. I mean, I'm like way back here, so bear with me. The very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a tick mark on the left-hand side of this paper at the one and a half inch mark. So I'm gonna find one and a half, and I'm gonna make a dark one, because I want to make sure you guys can see it. Okay, so one and a half. Then here in the center, which is here at the bottom, we're gonna make a tick mark at one and three quarters. That's all the way down here. I better line that back up, gotta make that kind of close. All right, so there's my second one. I'm gonna hold this up. Do you see it so far? So we have one here, and we have one here. Now we need one on this side. So the easiest way is to hold it off here, off the paper. I'm trying to see if I can bring you out, bring you in just a little bit so you can see. There we go. You get a little bit more shot of my table, but you'll get it. This one on the right-hand side of the paper needs to be at two and a quarter. So I'm going to actually highlight that so I can see it. Do you see when I line my paper up here? Two and a quarter, and we're going to make a tick mark here. So now we have three tick marks. We have one here, one here, and one here. Now I'm gonna bring you in closer because I think you'll be able to see what I'm actually doing better this way. Hi Susan, hi Brandy, hi Nancy. You have those pencils too, huh Nancy? Aren't these like the best, best eraser? All right, so we've got tick marks. Now we're gonna connect the dots pretty much. And I am using the Stampin' Up! trimmer. I have to tell you of all the trimmers on the market and I've used them all, this one by far is the best and not because I sell it. It's because it comes with the scoring blade, which is the light. It comes with the cutting blade. This healing mat where the cutting tool comes down is reversible, so you don't have to worry about it running out like really quick. It has an extended arm for cutting, love that. And there's even storage on the back. Little clear case opens up and you can put stuff inside of there. You gotta love that. Look, and I opened it up without turning on the lock. So let me talk to you about the lock because that's another great feature. Right here at the very, very top, you slide this and then look what happens. The handle won't open, which is great if you're gonna take it with you somewhere. You don't have to worry about losing pieces. Love this thing. It extends completely to 12 inches. All right, so we're gonna do some cutting. There is a groove down inside the trimmer right here. This is where the blade travels. That is the cutting line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect now our tick marks. I'm gonna try to move my light down a little bit closer. Hopefully you can see better. So our first tick mark is here and our other tick mark is down here. But I'm gonna connect those by making sure that that tick mark here and here is in that groove. Now, trust me, when you do this at home, it's gonna be a lot easier than it appears to be while you're just watching it here on the video. So I've got this all lined up and I'm gonna take my blade, I'm just gonna slide and slice. All right, so you can see I've gotten pretty darn close. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we're good. Now we're gonna do the same thing from here to here. So I'm gonna line that up, line this one up here in the groove, this one up here in the groove, here and here. I'm gonna close it and then I'm gonna slice. 
All right, so look, we've got this kind of funky looking point, and you're probably thinking, what are you doing with that? Well, I'm gonna show you. All right, so I'm gonna take these smaller pieces. Those are trash. I know someone's probably freaking out going, no way, we could use those. Pencil eraser. We're gonna take off those little tick marks, which in my case are not so little. I wanted to make sure you could see it. And I'm gonna erase this one over here as well. All right, now here comes the next part. This was the three inch by four inch piece that I also told you that I cut. What we're going to do is we wanna make sure that we have a, a similar angle. So we're not gonna cut anywhere below here. So we're gonna actually start here. Do you see this, how I'm actually lining up this edge with the top corner here. So this edge with the top corner. All right, so I'm lining those up and I wanna make sure my paper is straight. So I'm gonna lay it down, guys. I hope you can still see me. I think you can. All right, so I've got this going here, lining it all up. And then literally, we're just gonna trace this. So I am going to take my pencil and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna come down here. So we have those pencil marks. Now I know it's kinda of light, but can you see it? All right, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna cut this. So back to the trimmer. This time it's gonna be a little bit different because obviously this one doesn't come all the way down so you probably can't see it. Let me slide over a little bit, there you go. So I'm gonna start this one in the track, but I'm probably thinking, well, how are you gonna line up this one? Well, I'm gonna give you a little secret. We made this guide clear where the blade travels on purpose. So look what I'm gonna do. I am going to take that pencil mark and I can actually see it through the clear track. But you're like, well, how are you gonna start? Well, here's the best part of the Stampin' Up! trimmer. I'm gonna take that blade and it has a little pointer right here. I'm gonna take that blade and I'm gonna literally place it on the pencil mark that I see, which is right here. And I'm looking and I'm like, that's pretty good. And then we're gonna slice. So we've got now that top part done. Now we're gonna do the same thing here on the bottom. So I've got my bottom end here inside the track and I'm gonna manipulate this, making sure my blade is all the way out of the way and I'm looking through this and I'm like, can I see it, can I see it? Yeah, I can kinda of see it. And keep in mind, I'm kinda of far away but I think I'm gonna be close enough. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna slide my blade over to where I want it to start and I'm gonna lay it down and then I'm gonna slice. I should end up with two pieces. That's pretty good for being, what, a foot and a half away from, from the table. So there we go, it kind of just fell apart for me. There we go, so we're gonna set that aside. We don't need this piece, that's also trash. So now we've got this, all right? Let's go ahead and do the stamping now. I'm gonna move you out just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. I'm gonna put those things to the side. I think we can still see my tick mark here. See, I was trying to make sure you could see them. But you know what? We're going to embellish them. I'm of this philosophy that if you can't hide it, decorate it. Right? Marina Mist Ink. These are the Stampin' Up! Classic ink pads. We love that everything is color coordinated. Boy, this just makes it brainless. So I'm going to open this up. And I tell people, if you don't know how to open it, I'm going to give you a little trick. And now don't laugh, all right? Because I really teach it this way. And people never forget. There's three little dots right here on the top. This is where you're gonna push. So if you treat this like a man, ladies, and if there's men with us, please don't take offense. This is actually a good thing. You're gonna push him away like a man, you're gonna turn him around, and then you're gonna lock, it snaps, in. That's a great way to remember on how to open up the pads, because these are not the old-fashioned kind where the lid flips. I know, you're probably laughing, but it works every time, they remember. So now we're gonna do some stamping. I've got a cluster of snowflake image here and I'm pulling out the stamp set because I want to show it to you. I think it's one of those sleeper sets in the catalog. This is called Perpetual Birthday Calendar. So you've got the months, which is great if you're a memory keeper or a scrapbooker, but it has all these small little stamped embellishments that are great for creating backgrounds or, um, or envelopes. Love the little wash here too. So I use this one, which is the small snowflake. I love that they're photopolymers, so you can see where you're going. That makes life really easy. So I'm gonna tap it on the ink pad, and then I'm gonna stamp that here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little bit of a wallpaper effect. And I just re-inked this before you guys join me, so it's probably a little darker than you like. But you know, you can always stamp off. By stamping off, I mean you'd ink, you'd stamp here first, and I'm gonna show you on the back side, 
and then you can stamp here so you get a lighter shade. A lot of people don't tell you that one ink pad will produce several shades of color. Yep, that'll save you some money, won't it? All right, I'm gonna stick one more little guy up here. And now we've got our bottom piece. And I'm gonna stamp this one with the same similar type of background. Again, I wanna rotate the paper and rotate my hand so that I get a wallpaper type effect. I want the design to continue the whole way. I want this more to look like designer paper than I do a stamped piece of cardstock. Hi, Gracie. All right, so I'm gonna put that off camera, throw my stamp onto the side. I'm gonna slide that over and now I'm gonna take out Whisper White. This is a craft ink. This is different than the Marina Mist one I just used. You're gonna say, wow, well, it looks the same. Yeah, it does, but it's not the same. This is a pigment ink. And that means that this ink is gonna be permanent when it dries. It can be used on fabric and it can be used for heat embossing, which means placing powder over it and using a heat tool to get that nice waxy embossed look. Today, I'm gonna to use it straight up because, and I'll tell you why is because I knew it was gonna take a long time to dry these pieces and I would drown you out with the noise. But don't worry, I've got one for you to show. So I'm using the Snowflake image and this comes from the stamp set called Holly Jolly Greetings. This set actually came out last year and I was thrilled when it got carried over. Love the words that can actually be put together to make phrases, fun snowflake. So I'm gonna be using this. This is where the snowflake came from. I, I tore the label off. Um, I'm gonna give you a little tip. Don't leave your stamps in the Florida heat. Uh, the label curled, which is, I knew I shouldn't have done that, so I just peeled it off, and it sticks to my block just fine. If you're a stamper, you probably are telling me, well, I don't put the label on anyway. I do, simply because I never know what direction the stamp is going in if I don't have an image. So we're gonna tap gently, and I'm gonna travel, and I'm looking to make sure I have ink. Yep, and this is kind of um, a filigreed, uh, sketchy type of stamp. So you're gonna see that some areas may actually come out darker than others, which is totally fine. And I'm creating just another background on top of the background. So now I'm stamping my little snowflakes. That's always a good sign when it sticks. There we got that. And now I'm gonna do my bottom. Very similar fashion. And filling that in here. What do you guys think so far? You're probably thinking, what are you gonna do with this mess? Yep, well, it's gonna be really cool in a minute. All right, so you wanna take the pigment ink off your stamp right away. You wanna make sure that you don't leave it on there because like I said, it is permanent. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clean that really quick. It's off camera on my Stampin' Scrub. Now, if you don't know what a Stampin' Scrub is, I'll show you. It is kind of like doing the dishes for your stamps. Here we go, it's two-sided, one side is sprayed wet with a mixture of a stamp cleaner. I mix mine with water and this one's dry. You know, someone's going mix it with water. You know what, you guys, I've been doing this 18 years. I'm not gonna lie to you. I find mixing it and diluting it works just as well as full strength and it saves you money. That's just a Lisa-ism. That doesn't mean that's the way you should do it. That's just what I do. I actually color code my wet side with green fingernail polish. I stole this from Boo, yep. I find that when I'm teaching classes or I'm stamping with friends, everybody knows the wet side because it's green. And then of course this side is dry. So that's kind of how you clean your, your stamps. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna break out those foam strips. Now this pigment ink is slow to dry and you can see, maybe you can see, there's ink still here on my work surface and it's wet. What I wanna do is I wanna make sure that when I flip this upside down to put some adhesive strips on it, that I'm not ruining it. So I'm actually going to take this paper and I'm gonna flip this over because I wanna make sure I don't smear this mess up and make it look all messy for you. All right, so here we go. We've got our pieces. We are gonna flip these over and we're gonna take out the adhesive strips. I love that you get a bunch of these in here and you can see that I've used them. So pre-cut for you, so I'm pulling one off. Kind of like double-sided dimensionals, but in a strip form, and that's what I love about these because all the work is done for you. You don't have to put little tiny circle pieces on here. So I'm gonna start here, and I am going to go around the circumference of this piece. So I'm gonna go all the way around. And then I'm gonna go down here. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but uh, Bob the Builder is very busy in his Hallmark Christmas movie phase. And I can hear Christmas carolers singing in the other room. So I'm gonna take one more. And did you notice how I didn't cut it? 
Now, if you're a cutter, great, but you know what? This saves so much time. So I'm gonna put this one here, and now I'm gonna have to cut, because we're here at the end. These are my sticky scissors. I have a pair in my stamp room that I use specifically for adhesives because otherwise they get all gummy and hard to use. So now we have this one, and now we're gonna do this one as well. So I'm gonna go around the outside. Do you notice I'm not going too, too close to the edge? I'm gonna actually cut this one because I wanna get up a little bit further on this, and you'll see why in just a few minutes. Then I'm coming down, and I'm coming around. I mean, you could do this. I mean, this is something even the kids can do. If you cut the paper for them, they're great little stampers. All right, this doesn't want to stick because I have it upside down. Remember, I'm a foot and a half away. All right, there we go. And then here's one other. We're going to connect, and then we're going to cut. Can you use dimensionals? Yes, you, you absolutely can use dimensionals. And I actually have some samples for you using dimensionals versus the adhesive strips. And I think you're gonna see that the difference is very noticeable. And I think you're gonna agree that this is probably the better way to go. This is gonna fit right back onto that little waxy surface that it came in. So you don't ever have to worry about it um, being lost. I got a notification, let me just get rid of that. Okay, so. There we go. I'm just gonna press to make sure it's on there really good. I'm grabbing my paper piercing tool. My fingernails are very, very short, so this is kind of my best friend. This is one of the next steps. There's that white card base we talked about. This is going to go here. This is going to go here. Isn't this cool? Isn't this cool? But we need to add some words. So let's go ahead and add our greeting. Now, I'm going to be honest too and tell you that I actually stamped my greeting when I had the whole card together, but that's kind of risky because if it doesn't work, then you've kind of messed the whole thing up. And I'll tell you right now, this is not forgiving. Once it's down, you cannot get this up without ruining it. So here's a tip for you. Go ahead and place it where you feel it's going to go. And then you're gonna go back with your favorite mechanical pencil. And remember, you're gonna probably see my head, guys, because I gotta get in there fairly close, otherwise I'm not gonna get this in. And I'm gonna make little lines for that area that I'm gonna put my greeting in. And I'm actually gonna do it here on the angle. Are you with me so far? Okay, moving that out of the way, bringing my Marina Mist ink back in. This is the word piece, and because I have no label on here, I am gonna stamp it here to make sure it's going the right way. Boy, I've done that. If you don't put the labels on and it's upside down, you've got a not the right word. So I'm gonna stamp here. I'm gonna put the word peace. I'm getting down here, so bear with me if you can't hear me as well, because I'm kind of far away. So we've got peace. Now from that same stamp set, here is the on earth. So I'm gonna tap, 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 and I put that right next to it. There we go, so we got peace on earth. Now I wanna give that ink just a second to dry before I take that eraser to it. So let's talk about how to close these. Believe it or not, I have people who say to me, well you just push it from here. Oh gosh, don't do that because that's gone flying so many times. The track in there slides very well after you break them down and use them. These two slots right here, these are for your fingers. Put your fingers in there, push off the bottom, pull towards you, and it's the reverse and then a snap. We design them so the ink is always upside down, ready for you at the top, nice and juicy to go, and there's grippers on the sides. You don't even have to store them upside down the old fashioned way. Isn't that great? Love that. All right, I think we're ready. And take my mechanical pencil eraser, my favorite, and I'm just very carefully gonna go and erase those lines, just in case my positioning with that foam tape on that piece is not exactly where I intended. It gives me just a little bit of room. I'm gonna start at the top. So with my paper piercing tool, because I think I told you my nails are short, I am gonna get up underneath here and I'm gonna pull off that strip, taking off the paper backing so it reveals the other sticky side. All right, so there's the first one. All right, I'll make sure I'm in your view. Yep, I think you can see. So this is gonna go here near the top. I'm trying to see if I'm close. Am I close, guys? I think I'm close. I'm far away. All right, and then here's the bottom piece. Now this wasn't hard, right? It's not hard at all. And I will tell you, I did experiment with other dimensions and cutting this at different depths and different widths, it works. Just remember that you wanna start with the four by four piece of paper at the top and a three by four at the bottom. 
So let me take this one off. You know, there's always one that's going to be persnickety, right? And this happens to be the one. All right. So now we've got our bottom piece. Do you see why I didn't want to get too close here? Because if you're too close, it's actually going to kind of show. I got lots of thumbs up. I guess this means you guys like this. Yay. All right. So here we go. Here comes our bottom. I'm getting up on my tippy toes to try to get this as even as I can. That's pretty even. All right. There we go. Now. And true Lisa fashion, is this card done? Somebody tell me, is this card done? Nope, this card is not done. Do you wanna know why? Because it doesn't have bling on it. Yep, gotta have bling. I love bling, love me some bling. Yep, so let's do this. I'm gonna take some pearls and I'm gonna embellish this. So I'm gonna take some big ones. Now there's a glue dot already on the back, so you don't even have to worry about that. Use my piercing tool. I'm gonna to place one in here. And you know what, heck, it's Christmas, so you should be generous. That's what I say, so I'm gonna put a couple on here, picking those up. I put my finger next to them so I don't have to chase them all over the paper. Do another one here. Look at how much this little bit does, right? Kinda just brings everything out. Now you can add some other small ones if you'd like. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm gonna leave that. I'm just gonna give those a good little push and make sure they're there. But look at that, what do you think? What do you think? Yes, yeah, some of you are thinking, oh, rhinestones. Oh, yeah, rhinestones would be great too, wouldn't they? But isn't this fun? Look it. All right, I've got more to show you. All right, so let me grab one of my other ones. So this is the first one. Let me grab the next one. This one is the one I heat embossed. Very pretty, Patty says. You love the marina mist. Yes, it's beautiful in the white, isn't it? It's so frosty looking. Hi, Dawn. All right, so... I did the exact same thing. I even used the exact same ink, but I just very quickly poured the white embossing powder over it and then I heat set it. Now, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I have hundreds, and I mean hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel. Easy to find, just type in my name, Lisa Curcio. It's not under Lisa Stamp Studio because it's been around just that long, way before I actually established the Lisa Stamp Studio name. But the exact same card, this one doesn't have the bling. Can you guys see? I didn't put pearls on there. But yeah, we can add it, right? So embossed, again, this is up on those adhesive strips. This one's not embossed. Which one do you like better? They're both pretty, aren't they? All right, how about some other cards? All right, so let me show you what else I did. I've got one more Christmas one. Check out this, nice and simple. Nice and simple. This uses the Star of Light stamp set which has really been popular this year. So I used some of the less popular images and I used Night of Navy and Sweet Sugar Plum. And of course, look at the bling. Got to love the bling. Added some rhinestones versus pearls. Played up my greeting so it didn't get too lost. Do you guys like that one too? Okay, so next one. Ready for some non-Christmas ones? This uses Paisleys and Posies. This is also in the holiday catalog. Look at this color combination. This is mint macaron, watermelon wonder, and tip top taupe. And then I used that beautiful coordinating uh, mint macaron ribbon and tied it around this. Now this one's dimensionals. I'm trying to see if you guys can see that or not, but this is dimensionals. Do you kind of kind of see that here? Dimensionals. Let me show you the difference. Do you see the difference in the depth of these cards? I don't know if you can, but you should be able to see it. Yep. Do you see how much more elevated this looks? It gives it a deeper 3D effect to this card than this one with the dimensionals. But that's fine. You know what? Use what you've got. But I will tell you, for the price of these foam adhesive strips, it is totally, totally worth it. So this is Paisley Symposies, and I've got one more. Let me show you that one. This one's my favorite because I love the glittery bow. Beautiful little double glitter bow. This uses that glitter ribbon combination in the holiday catalog. So you get the sweet sugar plum and you also get silver. Isn't this pretty? Exact same thing. Now this one uses dimensionals as well. Again, can you see the difference here between this one and the one we just made? Look at, can you see the depth difference? I think you can. You need help with bows? Kathy, good news. I have a video on different bows and knots. Just type in my name, Lisa Curcio, and put in bows, and it should come right up. So we've got this one as well. This uses the, um, I think it, is it Blooms and Wishes? Oh my gosh, I have to look, you guys. I'm sorry. This is uh, Rich Razzleberry, 
and Blushing Bride and Sahara Sand. And you can see the script words. Boy, I got brave on this one. I actually thought, oh man, I gotta put the words in after I put it together, but it worked out, yay. So we have this one, we have this one, and then we have the embossed one I showed you, and then the one we made tonight. Which one's your favorite? I would love, love to know which one is your favorite. Yeah, Kathy, go check it out. You said you'll do that tomorrow. Marin, you love this, huh? Pretty, pretty, pretty. Now, before we go too far, I want to show you guys what's coming up on Live with Lisa next Saturday. So let me set these aside. I'll show them to you again one more time before we go. I am going to use this single stamp. You know what? December, busy and expensive time of year. Would you not agree? But this, again, is a sleeper stamp set in the catalog. It does come wood mount, but you know what? Based on the size, it's totally fine. And you're not going to believe what I've done with this. You are going to love this. I've done four different cards, and you're going to get the tutorial to all four. How do you join? $35 order gets you an invitation to that special closed event. And then I'm also using this one, the Weather Together Bundle. And again, you're going to be pretty surprised at what I did with this. There is one card that I'm going to demonstrate that you're going to be thrilled with. Just something totally out of the box and the coordinating framelits. All right, so let me flip you around. You get that nice view of the ceiling, huh? But at least now you can kind of see my, my little Christmas tree here in my stamp room. Um, somebody asked me earlier, how big is it? And you know, I measured it. I'm thinking it's about three foot because I'm not very tall. But um, so that's coming up next Saturday live with Lisa full length episode takes us about an hour and you're going to get the PDF tutorials to all these projects. And if I'm counting right, there's at least eight. There might even be nine. I'm reaching to close my drawer because I want to hold up these other cards I just did with you. So this is the one we did tonight. I'm dying to hear which one is your favorite. All right. And then this one with the Star of Light. And of course, this was the one that was heat embossed. Beverly likes the paisley one. Dawn likes the one that's embossed. Patty, you said you like them all? Yay! And then here's paisleys and posies. And of course, this one has kind of my heart besides the Christmas one because I just love that glittery bow. And this is the um, Blooms and Wishes. That's what it's called. Finally remembered. So we did lots of stamping tonight. You know what? It's not hard. It looks harder than it is. So if you'll give me just a few minutes, I will post the photographs to these cards for you. The Paisley gets your vote. Yay. And I will type out the directions really quick to, um, to this cut so that you can duplicate this at home. It's really not hard. Give it a try. And I would love to see your creation. So do me a favor. When you make one, you have to post it on my page. Just put it, upload a picture. Anybody can post. The other thing is great news. Are you ready? I'm going to send these cards out to you. So this is what I want you to do. If you are interested in getting a card and who's not, I'm going to mail them to you. I've got envelopes. Everything is ready. I would love to send you a card. If you are willing, let me send you a card and you want and feel comfortable with sharing your address with me, I need you to contact me. So you have to click on that learn more blue button at the top of Facebook. It'll take you to my blog and at the top you'll see it says contact me and that will generate an email to me. And if you're comfortable with it, send me your address and I'm going to pick, let's see, one, two, three, four, I've got five cards. I'm going to send five cards out to people so I could just spread some Christmas cheer. You may get the Paisley one and you may get the Bloomin' one and not the Christmas, but I think that you'll be happy with it. I am so grateful that you watched me, guys. Thanks so much. And I will be back with you um, early January. I think I'll do another spotlight then before Stamps in the Mail starts. And I just want you to know I'm in business because of your business and I'm very grateful for you. And I wish you and your family the happiest and the merriest of Christmas seasons. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. Have a great day.